Welcome back to the Movement is Medicine podcast. Dr. Gene Chirac abroad here with Dr. Megan Weezer, Dr. Corey, I drink orange goo how. Mm. Have you guys ever had orange lava burst? Uh, no. High C? No idea no. what you're saying. I don't know what that is. They have it at McDonald's. <laughs> 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 well, they used to, and then they took it away, and uh, then they brought it back. Um, this is, that's, it's not this, but it's a homemade version. Um, it tastes just like it. It's, it's great. It's a pretty orange. I'll yeah. give you that. <laughs> yep. So I... I like stop touching the microphone. I'm adjusting it <laughs> right where my mouth is so that they can hear me. We're going to hear like whoosh, whoosh, yeah. whoosh. Fine, I won't tell my story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell your story. I like energy. Okay. <laughs> um I like coffee and energy drinks and caffeine. That um, kind of energy? Not like physics energy? That, that too. Yeah. Okay. Um E equals M E equals MC squared. But it's expensive to, you know, get Starbucks every day or mm -hmm. buy energy drinks Unless every you day. Have gift cards. <laughs> Unless you have a gift card. Yes. Um still expensive, but still not, expensive. not your expense. You still yeah. see, yeah. It's like, oh, seven dollars for this? Like what the hell? Yeah. yeah that's stupid. <laughs> um it's so stupid. But Aldi has these I love Aldi. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Aldi. Um don't increase your egg prices like everywhere else. Uh, or any price. Or any prices. I can get my weekly groceries for like fifty bucks. We there. just bought um 18 eggs for seven dollars at Wegmans. Seven at Wegmans, yeah. Shoot, I'm about that to head like to Wegmans. Lot. No, it's eight, 18, 18 eggs. eggs. Um, well, actually, that is kind of a lot. What's two and a half dozen? That's 30 eggs, yeah. 30 eggs at Giant right now is like 12.99, which is I don't think I pay attention closely to egg prices to know. Egg prices are way high right now for some reason. I go through phases of buying yeah, them and never high. buying them, so I don't really pay attention. I mean, they used yeah. to be like 79 cents at Aldi for a dozen. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. When they're on sale. Um, that, maybe that was Midwest prices. Probably. Came out here and it was a little more expensive. Yeah, we used to, eggs used to be like 2 dollars or three ninety nine dollars for a dozen, like yeah, for so organic, hard. high quality, big eggs. Oh, but, yeah, those are like it's all the same. Six ninety nine, seven ninety nine now. Although the, the farm... Raised eggs, uh, like the free range, free range stuff. The yolks are a deeper yeah, yellow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, they do taste a little bit yeah. better. I don't think you have to get organic eggs, but free range is definitely kind of what we look at. I think it tastes better. I don't know if it's worth you know double the price, but uh, anyway, Aldi. Yeah. Um, they have little flavor like water flavor packets. Mm -hmm. Um, I get these caffeinated ones that are ninety milligrams of caffeine mm. in one of them. Um, which is like a, a Red Bull. Yeah. Um, Less than a typical cup of coffee, but still yep. good to give you a yep. little hit. It's like an eight ounce Red Bull, caffeine wise. And um, it's a dollar seventy nine for 10 of them. So the price of less than one energy drink, you get 10. I will give drinks. you a quarter to do all 10 at once. A quarter? Yes. A very shiny one. A very shiny quarter. I'll think about it. Okay. <laughs> On the next podcast, you will see Corey oh, with an shoot. adrenaline. I wanted to buy a spun dip for today. <laughs> oh, it's funny you say that. I had to go to Target on Sunday. Brooke and I went after we got brunch. <laughs> I like, you know how like you, if you have the Target app, you can like select like the coupons or whatever. I think it's you. pronounced Target, but continue. Oh. Mm, if you're fancy. Anyway, yeah. fun dip showed up on there and I almost <laughs> screenshot it and sent it to you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I should have got some. Yeah. <laughs> um so we we talked about fun fun dip on the last podcast and you guys afterwards we were talking like you thought I was acting like I genuinely had no <laughs> idea what you were talking about. So they had to show me like what what it was and and what it looked like and where it said fun dip and then we just kept going with the the fun stick and magic stick and all that stuff mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. The good times kept on rolling mm. last week. Um this week let, let's talk about um I've I've kind of had many conversations um, many or many, many, many yep. little, little conversations. Some in passing, uh, some with new members signing up now. Uh, it's always one of my favorite parts of having new members, new, new people going through the process of becoming members is their kind of questions. Like the topics are always the same, right? Like these are universal topics, but their questions about it and how they approach it. Uh, but we're certainly getting into the period now of motivation starting to take a hit for a lot of people. You know, like 
People right. get very motivated. Obviously, meaning like post New Year. Post motivation? New Year, uh, I think it's uh, it's it's a combination. So it's post New Year. It's also post uh, holiday. Like people are at home, they're relaxed. They're like, okay, it's cold out. <laughs> I can do it now. You know, they take a, a little step away from work and stress and all that stuff. And they're like, I, I'm, I'm motivated to do it now. And then they get back into day-to-day life. And they're like, oh, maybe my energy is not as high. Or maybe work is stressful. Or Go to all this. the improve your energy. Continue. Ten, ten at once. Yeah, ten at once. So I thought it would be, it'd be cool to talk about. And I, I know we've talked about before about motivation. Um, but I thought it would be good to kind of rekindle that of what can you do to maybe not get like, in the same mindset as the holidays, because that that's very tough, because uh, there's so many factors. But what can you do to create micro motivations? What can you do to keep yourself moving, even though you might not feel like you want to move? But what what can you do to keep going? And wh- one of the so one of the conversations that I had with somebody was that they kept saying they were telling one of their friends about recharge. Right mm-hmm. and there, we have this happen all the time, thankfully. Um, but they were saying like, yeah, uh, in like three weeks work will calm down and my schedule will get mm-hmm. a little bit better mm-hmm. and then I'll be ready. I feel like that's just adulthood. Yeah, like. but my response was like, <laughs> if you look for pockets to fit what you need to do into life, that is a recipe to fail, Yep. right? You have yeah. to try to fit things into day-to-day life because that's the only way you'll be consistent with it, right? right? If you are busy most of the time, you have to make strategy for yourself to do the things you want to do while you're busy not when you think you'll be free yeah because those free times are few and far in between yeah and it just means it it essentially reinforces to your your system that when you do get busy again like you're essentially giving yourself permission to not do it right and fitness and exercise is one of the things but people say that all the time that's why people are like holidays yeah you know i'll I'll be able to do this during the holidays because i have time off like yeah and you're motivated but the holidays are over. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. what do you do before then people, or afterwards? People prioritize what they want to prioritize. Um, and it, like you said, it could be fitness or it could be like people who want to read more. Like, I don't have time to read. Well, yeah. you can wake up a little earlier. Or I've heard Holes is a really good book. Holes is a great book. <laughs> um, probably, probably top five, uh, four out of the top five are Harry Potter books yeah. for me. <laughs> Um, Aren't there seven of them? <laughs> there are. So the top, <laughs> the uh, top four that you read. Yeah, the top eight books. Seven of them are Harry Potter. <laughs> One of them is <laughs> eight holes. is holes. Uh, the Berenstein Bears were good books. That was good oh books. Oh God! Yeah. Yeah. I read this awesome coloring book once. <laughs> <laughs> no words. <laughs> <It was perfect>. <laughs> no words. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, if it's tough to to change habits, but. Um, you have to actively try to prioritize what you want to to change. Um, you were you have another point. I was, well, I was just gonna say that like um, like when people view making a big change, they view it very much as like all or nothing, or For that sure. it's like a huge change. Mm-hmm. They don't like zero what sum. What am I trying to say? No, I'm not trying to say zero sum. I'm trying to say that like like let's say somebody wants to start making a habit of going to the gym or mm-hmm. a place like recharge and they're um it's a big shift for them and then it, it, it like their goal their goals are too daunting for where they're at mm. like they don't make they don't create the environment so that this new habit or the behaviors that are going to lead you to creating this new habit are easy and meaningful and um convenient like you kind of have to set it set yourself up take small little daily weekly monthly actions to set up your environment to cultivate the behaviors that you want to change that habit like set your workout up close out at the end of the the mm-hmm. night um before the morning if you're going to work out in the morning or something or um take a different route on the way home from work so that it passes the gym like yeah. you're making you're taking <sighs> I can't make words today. I'm very tired. But um, yeah, you take something big and you break it down into tangible, you just, smaller you parts. You make it easy for you to actually do it and hard for you to not do those behaviors. Like it almost becomes inconvenient to ignore this action. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about off ramps before, right? You have to create off ramps for yourself that are easy and thoughtless. Yeah. And almost, like make the behaviors that will get you to this habit change. 
lazy in a sense. Mm -hmm. Like, so you don't have to engage willpower. Yeah. Too, too often people try to figure out reasons or ways to say yes. Right? And we, we kind of touched on this before too. Like you'll say, how do I get myself to go to the gym or how do I get myself to eat more vegetables or how do I get myself to do whatever? Um, instead of saying, why would I not? What would I say? Why would I say no to this? So if you ask yourself why you wouldn't do it, then you can create a strategy around that. Um, I also think people just don't, like the the concept behind like the aggregation of mar marginal gains, like mm -hmm. getting 1% better every single day, yeah. just taking one small action, like people don't put as much depth into that or as much weight into that. Like they don't think that that matters. Because um, it's super hard to see a 1% gain. Yeah, and um, I don't think they realize how... Um, how little of an action it takes to like move you toward what you want to do. Yeah. Like it could be as simple as like, you know, eating, grabbing an apple instead of a cookie on the way out. Then, which isn't simple for some people, but like that was a bad example, but parking further away from the grocery store. Yeah. Like that little, getting a few more steps, little in, like, things like that. Yeah. Those, those add up. And I think people just, they don't think it does and, or don't think of that as being a, a, a tangible step toward where they want to be. They think they have to make these big changes in order to um, create this new habit. When really it's like, no, park a little farther away mm -hmm. at the grocery store. Um, Take the stairs at your building instead of the elevator. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Try to drink two 50-ounce water bottles a day. I am like, the worst at drinking water. Yeah, you and Juong. <laughs> like that was literally, <laughs> literally the ones yeah. drinking orange goo right now. <laughs> I just, terrible drinking water. No. I... It feels like I don't get thirsty. Um, so to drink water when I'm not thirsty is just like weird. That um, I mean, that's actually the, the recommendation is. You're supposed to drink it when you're not thirsty. No, you're supposed to drink it when you are thirsty. I've heard, well, I've heard Megan's theory. Yeah, yeah. I've heard if you wait until you're thirsty, it's too late. That's the old uh, mentality. Um, now it depends on, on fitness and performance. Like you should hydrate before because you're going to lose it. Obviously you have electrolytes, salt and stuff like that. But for typically, it's actually when you are thirsty, you you drink. If you are thirsty by the time activity happens, yeah. But that recommendation doesn't work that well for somebody who doesn't get thirsty. Yeah, like I, you still. I, have I'm not to... saying it's it's a like anything else. Yeah. Like it's always adjustable. But the recommended like, like you shouldn't necessarily. That wouldn't be the habit that I would chugging. recommend to somebody. The habit would be like when you see your water bottle, take a sip. Right. Or like after a bite of food. The ironic take thing. A bigger gulp than you feel like you need to. I love water bottles. <laughs> I don't drink water, but not the water yeah. in them. Yeah, just I, the water bottles. I, I I don't know why. I, I like, like I would buy a bunch of them if I could, but then they would just sit there, <laughs> just sit there. Yeah, for decoration purposes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> you talked about mini. I don't know your exact words. Um, like, like the, the aggregation marginal gains. Is that what you were saying? No, Gene said something about like doing a sm something small that Builds might help. Yeah. yeah. Um, kind of like a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. Mine. Uh, if I work out, I'm like way more likely to quote, eat healthier that day. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's something, it's probably subconscious. Like, oh, I maybe I don't know why, but I, I, I saw you trying to play with the cord, but I you was stopped yourself. To. Yeah. I feel like I need to angle it. Can I do that? Yes. Okay. That's good. You feel better? Now? I do. Yeah. Palm it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's something that kind of snowballs is mm -hmm. if I, tend to, if I work out in the morning, I'm more likely to eat, again, a, a quote, healthier breakfast, whatever that means, because um, there's debate on what what's healthy or not, but, um, and then that kind of goes I don't think that's on. subconscious. I think there's something to that, like. I, I mean, I, when I say subconscious, do you think I'm craving nutrient-dense food, and that's why I'm eating healthier, or do you think it's more subconscious, like, you're like, I, I already did something reasons. that's great yeah. for me. I'm going to continue doing something that's good for me. Right. I think, I think right. there's probably a layer of both. There is. Um, it depends on the person. Some people are more. It depends on your chemistry, I feel like, and your recent diets. Like, I don't get sugar cravings anymore, but I'm. I sleep relative <laughs> with the exception mm. of the last two nights. I sleep well. I fuel well. I train well. Like, I eat enough for what. Uh, my body is outputting like the input matches or exceeds the output so like i don't have that like craving kind of thing yeah most people 
are more driven by a negative not happening than a positive happening, right? Most people are more um, inclined not to lose than they are to win. This is well-established behavioral psychology. So for some people, they will eat healthier because they don't want to lose the m time they put into working out. They're like, hey, I just worked out. I worked out hard. Or I, don't I benefit. Undo I don't want to undo was. that. Yeah. So I will eat healthy. I think that's the driving motivation for most people is I don't want to do worse when I already did something good. I think few people look at it as a positive on top of a positive. Hey, I already worked out. Let me level that up a little bit more by eating healthier and, yeah. and growing that more. So most people come from I don't, I don't want to lose that. I feel like I've seen people like, I don't know, because they're doing a good thing, like they just, they feel better sure. in general. And then it just permeates yeah, into but other behavioral psychology is they make. people come from a place I don't want to lose. Yeah. Right. So yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people have that. Um, but like, I think like the, the aiming to get 1% better doing one small action or whatever over time, as long as that's like consistent, you get better, right? Like, and you create those habits. But on the flip side of that, if you get 1% worse every single day, like you're going to be worse off than you actually are. Yeah. One thing that, that helps people, every single person, and, and steroids. this is... Steroids. <laughs> steroids. Well, it depends on the type of steroids. Could sure. be anabolic or catabolic. Um, like the one thing that helps people a ton is accountability that not only do you make the goal, but you tell somebody about it and it's beyond you, right? We know that here because people are accountable to us, to the class. If they sign up, they're more inclined to come and show up, but it doesn't have to be a gym. Like you, as long as you're accountable to somebody, if you tell them, hey, I'm gonna work out three days this week and these are the days that I'm gonna go work out and they know that, then you're much more, more likely to do it. Um, same thing with eating or whatever you're trying to do. Um, I think work, accountability whatever. is part of it too, but I also think like people, like you ask people what their, you know, New Year's resolutions are, their goals or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's usually in the context of like fitness or nutrition or whatever. It's like, I want to get more fit or I want to get more toned or whatever. And like those, are, like those are common ones you hear, but it's not detailed at all. Like one, what do you mean by that? Two, why? Mm-hmm. And, like, I think at one point you asked us why, like, 17 times for something, mm -hmm. which was fucking annoying. But, like, it got to, okay, like, why do you want to become more fit? Because I feel like all my friends are fit and I can't do activities with them. Right. Okay, why do you want to do activities with them? Because my friends provide a social network for me and I don't have any family. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, then it's like, okay, so you want to become more fit, not because you just want to be more fit and lift weights, which is also a fine goal, but you want to become more fit because it mean something to you in like a loneliness perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the the three why rule, right? You follow up why, why, why. Yeah. The same the same way. And it's kind of like, you know, folding the paper. You can fold the paper five times or something like that, 17 times, whatever it's, it is. I think it's just But then seven, if you become clear seven. on that why, like I feel like that adds into like you holding yourself accountable, not only having like a network to also hold you accountable. Yeah, that's which which is very hard. It's very hard to hold yourself accountable. That's something I think a lot of people have to do a lot of work on to get to that kind of mindset mm. to achieve it. Um, I think motivation, again, we, we talked about motivation a good bit earlier episodes. It, it's it's very hard, but I think you do have to figure out a way to create those um, little micro progressions. Uh, I remember I shared an image in our group chat before where it was like four squares and each square got further divided. So there's one big square with no anything in it, which is the big kind of vision. Then you had columns added to the square, right? Where you started to have different ways to achieve that. Then you started to add rows to that in which each row then became, becomes one little tiny piece. So you can have one big picture, one big vision. I want to be healthy. That's great. But then you start to give yourself a little bit more lines, a little bit more structure. That healthy is work out once a week, and then you create those goals, which are more concrete, smaller, detailed goals of how to achieve that. And then if you share that with somebody, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm working on, um, and then proceed to that. Um, one of the big things I always, one of my favorite phrases on time is people are like, I need to make time. I have to, I have to find time. I'm like, time isn't made, time is managed, mm, right? It's yeah. there. 
you don't have to look for it. It's, it's concrete. You and your semantics. It's, it's a the constant same thing. I need to make time. They they understand they're not going to add a twenty fifth hour of the day. But they don't. No, they, they do. The people are very purposeful with their words. So once you reframe how they say it, I mean, semantics is our is our perception interpreted through language of the world, right? So if you change that perception, then you interpret the world very differently. So if you're not making time, making something is very hard. Managing something is not as hard. So even in the words that people use, they start to recontextualize how they should look at their day to day. Got to make everything, everything more relevant, easier, a little bit less friction. Yeah. Make your goals. Manage your goals. Manage your goals. <laughs> <laughs> no, goals you make. Make and then your you goals them. achievable. <laughs> He's just trying to throw you off. Set the practices and actions in place so that like, they're also achievable consistently. Mm -hmm. Consistency is the key, but... To get to that consistency, I think that that's the hard thing. Well, um, that's what I mean. Like, people are always like, I need to work harder. I need to, like, oh, I don't have willpower. I have no self-control. Like, mm -hmm. no, your goal's just too hard for you to hit right now. Yeah. Make it easier. Yeah, unrealistic for sure. Um, to finish out with, I think what, what people are really not good at is extrapolation of either feelings or volume or really anything, right? To take what you have, conceptualize it to what it will be or what it will feel like or what it will be after the fact um clear example like in, in our world it's if you have six rounds of six people are like oh i can do six of this they don't think about 36 yeah. and how their body will feel <laughs> um it's the same thing for pretty much everything that's why like when you're giving your example of working out right if you just do something you'll feel better afterwards but you think about the little thing in before that you don't think about the after effect of how good you'll feel like, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to work out. I don't know what I, I should do. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter if the end goal is feeling different, right? If you want to feel different, go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Go for, go to the gym and waste your time. It doesn't matter, right? If, if the end goal is feeling better, if the goal is progressively building muscle, then yeah, it's not just going for a walk or little things like that. It's progressive overload and training and doing all that stuff. So you have to match up the goal to what you want, but that extrapolation has to be there to the big picture. What are you trying to accomplish after the fact? Uh, most people are very, very bad at that extrapolation, but it doesn't take much, right? It doesn't take much. I think the biggest, biggest point of this is if you're in a rut, if you're having a hard time motivating yourself and you're zero sum or all or nothing, you're like, well, I have to go to the gym, but then you're like, I don't want to go to the gym, go for a walk, start with a little thing, um, do some pushups, right? Do some air squats, do, do the smallest Minimum effective dose for that goal, um, MOD, and see see what how that, that extrapolates. Saying? Imperfect action is better than imperfect. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. Yes, mm. let's go with that. That sounds good. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah, it makes sense. I like it. Okay. Um, so let us know. Are you are you in a rut? Does this help you give give you a little nudge to move forward? Um, Nudge is a good book, too. Have you guys ever read Nudge? No, I'm listening to Atomic Habits right now, and I love it. I might buy it and reread it. Atomic Habits is good. Nudge is good. I think you'd like that. Kind of similar concept of you, yeah. you, you establish your environment to give you little nudges instead of giant pushes. The little nudges add up and mm. keep you the propelling forward. The Power of Habits is good, too. Yep. I've, I've heard good things about ago. the Twilight series. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for tuning in to the Movement is Medicine podcast. Comedic Go ahead and subscribe release. on YouTube. That's not even comedic anymore. That's just like derailing. <laughs> Detrimental. <laughs> Talk about a motivational hindrance. Oh God. Uh, head over to YouTube at RechargeXFit. Head over to RechargeXFit.com. Check out our website. And, of course, on Instagram, at RechargeXFit. If you haven't seen a clear pattern of where you should go, um, you can always just look up at RechargeXFit, and it'll send you somewhere. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you again in the next episode of the Movement is Medicine podcast.